Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731 1230. That's 731 1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1 866 820 that's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hello, Nevada. I'm William Beach Baker, coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada, with the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. I'm the producer of the show, so I'm not normally behind the mic, because behind the golden mic normally is Jen Solis and Kurt Dukach, along with... Uh, uh, Perry Haichu, who's with me in the studio today, but Kurt and Jen will be calling in from uh, San Francisco, beautiful San Francisco. Yeah, they're on assignment. They're <laughs> on a special assignment for Weekend Radio. And uh, unfortunately, our other colleague, Mr. Raymond Fletcher, has announced that he is running for candidate to, for political office. He's running for City Council Ward 1 against incumbent Lois Tarkanian, and the primary is on April 7th, and uh, he will no longer be able to uh, join us on the radio show as a host until the uh, election is over due to, I believe, FCC guidelines or something like that, Beach. I, I don't know exactly what the pro prohibiting factors are, but he can't uh, join us today, unfortunately. Yeah, and, basically, uh, it's a, a matter of being politically correct. Yes, sir. Uh, and a little bit of Robert's Rules of Order. But uh, yeah, uh, when, you, when you're involved in organizations like We Can and you're and um, and I understand Jen and Kurt are going to be on the line here in just a minute. But when you're involved with WeCan and nonprofits like us, you're held to a higher standard. This is like a ministry, folks. And so this is our anniversary show. It's been one year, 52 episodes. This is our 52nd episode. We want to thank Lawrence for being behind the boards with us throughout this process. No and we certainly want to start off and thank the audience. Each and every one of you who have listened, tens of thousands of you out there every single week. And we're growing in numbers. And we're very, 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 very grateful to you. But also, we are extremely grateful to our host, KLAV AM 1230 to talk of Las Vegas. Absolutely. We, we could never thank them enough for allowing us to give a voice to our uh, our opinion so so loosely and freely. You know, Absolutely. it really means the world to us. Well, I've got some uh, honored uh, guests that we can media team specials on the line. And we have Jennifer and Kurt in San Francisco. What's going on in San Francisco? Actually, Beach, we're in Oakland. Um, we went to Facebook land, believe it or not. <laughs> Facebook <laughs> land? Okay, tell us yeah. about there. Why you, why you well, at Facebook? So, okay, well, you know, our We Can 702 page on Facebook, it got hacked. And then it got hacked, and we recorded it and reported it. And do you know that there's no, like, phone number for Facebook? Can you believe it? I believe you. Yeah, that's uh, Well, there's no number, number for Facebook. There's no direct contact for Facebook, mm. like a, a dot .com or a contact us. That really is adequate for what was going on. So I decided to drive down here and go to Facebook land myself. And when I got here in um, is Menlo Park, do you know what the address of Facebook is? What? To add insult to injury, it's number one hacker way. Oh, my goodness. So Facebook I has no... I you not. Yeah, Facebook That's has funny. no face. Yeah, and it's, it's called Number One Hacker Way. And, you know, then we, we went in and we filled out reports and everything else. And it's just like, can we, you know, sit down and talk to somebody? No, just fill this report out. <laughs> so it was almost like, you know, filling a report out. But we're going to get the IP addresses of people that uh, hacked us and are spamming. So if you guys are listening out there, if you go on to our Facebook page, not the Instagram, but the Facebook and you click on any of those links, your stuff can be hacked. Your your site can be hacked itself because you'll look at it and in the lower right hand corner it says stuff like Viral Sky. It says also 
um, something Vox or viral Vox and some other type of things. And when you click into those stories, it, it can hack your account, too. At least there are several people that have done this. And so we, when we went, came down here and we find out Facebook is called Number One Hacker Way, do you know what they had last week? No. An event called Facebook Hackers Convention. Oh, my goodness. Well, we went. I we, know, right? You should have been there last week then. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Well, like when our shit got hacked. But, you know, I don't think I did, that's too much of a jump to say this is the, the reason that it got hacked. But I'm just saying that how what they told us initially about it is that, um, that it could be when you have those programs that say give my information to Facebook so I can sign in through Facebook on this, like from gaming or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, kind of. Like when Meetup says... Oh, you can sign in with Facebook? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, link it okay, and sign so in this that way. That is how a lot of people's uh, stuff has gotten hacked. Really? Because I've, 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 I've never done that. Hmm. Don't have a full report of the IP addresses and everything else for our hacked stuff, and then we have to go through legal channels and everything else to mess them up. But we'll get it back. And it, it's just crazy that the the amount of stuff that we went through just to get it back. Not only that, here in Oaksterdam, you know, Oaks, Oak, Oakland, um, at Oaksterdam, they're shutting, Facebook is shutting down a bunch of people's Facebook pages that are about cannabis. Yeah. And it's more like the their um, dispensaries that have Facebook pages. Their Facebook pages have been shut down by Facebook. I heard Harborside's Facebook page got shut down recently. I heard a bunch of, I, yeah, this has definitely been going on for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I almost wonder whether that's like, I don't want to jump to conclusions again, but maybe that's why they're giving you the runaround. They're not really too quick to uh, to jump to your to your aid because we're a cannabis page. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I wish it could be said that way, but they pretty much, there was a runaround before we even mentioned the name of our page because right. we didn't even mention the name of our page and until we found out their, po you know, their policy and stuff. So I'm, I'm not that, I'm not going to take that leap on it, that, that, um, I just pretty much think that that's, that they have a pretty, I don't know, poor reporting type of system. Fair mm. enough. Let's just hope it gets resolved soon. And, you know, uh, thank you for you know, taking your guys' this time to go out there and try to handle it all directly. I mean, well, I did what I could also to try to reach out to them through through channels and basically got the, the basic uh, standard message response, you know, yeah. go through this and that and well, the other. For, for for all you listeners out there that are trying to, you know, get the, the recent information that we would normally be posting on our Facebook page, go to the new page that we have running until we get our page back up. It's We Can 702 New, and that is uh, that is the page that we'll be posting our events and all the all the current news and everything that you need until we get our page back up. And we'll also post onto that page when when our page is back ours and it's in our control and you won't have to worry about getting you know, spammed anything from the page. Right. So. Okay, we can 702 new. We can 702 new. Okay. Right on. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah, very good. Yeah, Kurt <laughs> takes care of a lot of our technical stuff. Uh, we want to talk a little bit before we lose uh, connection, <clears throat> if, if, we, if that happens, uh, a little bit about the year in review. Now, uh, we we started this radio show one year ago, uh, this day, actually, mm -hmm. and um, I showed up. I wasn't a member of the radio team. I was uh, Kurt and and Mike and and Jen, and I showed up at the studio just for moral support. And uh, Jen says, "Come on in." And and next thing you know, I was I was helping Mike get coffee or water or something. And and uh, here I am, 52 weeks later, producing the show. Yeah, time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of amazing. It's sort of like you see a need. But there were some uh, some 420 moments during that time, and uh, Jen and I certainly had a couple of them, Jen. You remember when I said to you, I was thinking about having a 420 moment, and you were thinking about having a 420 moment, and I started to say something, and you said, I was thinking of that. <laughs> and yeah, so, exactly. Because yeah. it was between 4, uh, 4 and 5 p.m., we had needed to have a 420 moment for everybody. I mean, because I know I've had enough of those on my own. You know, just being a patient. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. 
but uh, it's stuff like that and uh, that has uh, evolved in this show. And this this year, it's this has been quite a revolutionary year for us to be on the radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's very exciting, and we're very happy. Uh, to to deliver the news and to bring things to the audience, but uh, I think we're we're staying ahead of the curve. Now, what's happening after one year? I actually happen to know that they're listening to us, <laughs> and that uh, other media sources are listening to us, and they're actually quoting us in other sources. So uh, it, it's a very interesting year. We have great possibility, but we also want to talk about what we can do as a community to build up this station and to build up this radio show Absolutely. and to take it to the next level, okay, in this new year. Well, if I'm not mistaken, we have a Facebook page dedicated to the radio show, also the Absolutely. Weekend Radio Show Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And, and, we're also, and we're also thinking about uh, going into podcasting because podcasting, you know, people want to listen to, you know, what's going on in cannabis news in Nevada and beyond, for sure. Mm-hmm. Of course, but, there's a um, lot of interest. Right. Now, the plan you is... You know who we're staying with, though? Yeah. While we're down here? I could guess. We're Ooh. staying with Dan Wright. Yeah, I, I was going <laughs> to... Right on. How, how is it in Oakland? Is we're, it beautiful, or what's it like? You know, we hear, we hear all this horrible stories about Oakland. I mean, well, what's it like up there? Pretty well, town? You know, I, I, just a lot more traffic in California, for sure. Um, it's a beautiful day out, and he's living... He lives in this 100-year-old house gorgeous um and i don't know i always look on the bright side of life we went to the oakland museum this morning but we're going to oaksterdam tomorrow so okay. hey very cool very okay. cool take pictures yeah we're going to go meet with some of the people over at oaksterdam and uh <laughs> you know they're coming they're coming to uh vegas in march so hopefully we can uh form a partnership with them and you know help out with that well, that's fantastic. Absolutely. All right. That's now, you guys are going to be back in time for this week's uh, this week's uh, patients together. We can meeting, aren't you? Yeah, actually, we're going to be back uh, that Saturday at two p.m. at the coffee uh, the coffee bean and tea leaf. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good. And then now, uh, is, then I just wanted to is talk. Is Raymond a- on the show today? Because he was part of that year long thing, or did he resign no, before the show? No. Uh, Raymond is not here in the studio with us today because, uh, as you know, as a candidate, he can no longer be behind the mic at all. Ah. Because he was behind the mic at one time as a broadcaster, as a mic personality, he can't actually be behind the mic anymore with We Can because his role is completely changed. So the uh, oh, we had a okay. talk. We had a talk with the people here at the station, and and we decided that uh, we're we're going to do the politically correct thing and play it safe. And he's not going to be because he can't be. He can't be behind the mic well, anymore. Well, we'll Legally. welcome him back as as uh, the council person for chair uh, for Ward One, right? When he wins the election. Right. Once he gets elected, uh, uh, well, we can't actually ever have him on Did the show. You? Because uh, apparently uh-huh. the way it works is that once you've been a radio or television personality, basically you're pretty well, you're out of the business. Unless you're, pre- unless you're President oh, you Reagan. Oh, so Ronald Reagan could never <laughs> go back <laughs> yeah. to acting? Uh, pre- I, apparently. I'm not sure how that works, but uh, apparently. Or, I, or once you're yeah. the president, you can do He can't be on acting. our show. He could probably go on another show. Right, but he can't it's just be on because our show. he was our host, exactly. Yeah. We can't really have him on. It's sort of like an unfair advantage, I guess. So, sorry, well, folks, bummer. but but Raymond, we love you. We wish you the best, as we do every candidate of every political persuasion that supports us. And uh, we ask the audience to support him if that's your choice. But if you don't and you support someone else, we hope that you'll make sure to tell that candidate to support us. Okay? And uh, God bless each and every one of you. But here at Weekend, we're also looking for some new members in this new year. Uh, you can get on our mailing list for free, but for $35 a year, uh, you can become a member. And that all that money goes towards the patients and uh, helps to build up our community. And of course, we're looking for sponsors and other supporters. And there's a million ways to get involved. So in this new year, uh, if you have broadcast experience or if you're a techno person or something, uh, send me your resume and maybe I'll find you a job on the radio team. Right now, we're not paying anything, but eventually all our jobs will be paid jobs. Well, I actually had a question for Beach and Jen and Kurt. Um, you, know, you guys have done basically every show since it started. I jumped in a little late, and I was wondering, out of all the guests we've had, is there really a moment that, that stuck out in your mind that was really special? 
mm. during the show? A guest that you had that really hit you hard or, or an interview that really struck a chord with you or anything like that? Well, I would have to say Keith Patton. Okay. No doubt. Um, Keith, Powerful story. Keith lost, <laughs> Keith, yeah, Keith lost you know, his child because he was a medical marijuana patient, and he was fighting to get his child back into his custody. And he looked at me with the tears in his eyes, and I, would, I just teared up, and I was just, like, so sad and devastated thinking, um, you know, what if my kid got taken away from me because I was the patient? Um, that, it, that really hit me hard. Um, but as far as, like, highlights, uh, Dan Rush being on the show, he was the head of the UFCW, um, Cannabis Workers Rising, Kick Senior Bloom, of course, mm-hmm. um, you know, Michelle Fiore and Victoria Seaman. Jeez, there's a lot of moments that really. No doubt. We've had really, a lot of good I was guests. just like, this is great. This is great stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how about Victoria's husband, uh, John, who was ex DEA? He, uh, he was a master at dodging the questions. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, I would also, I'd also like to add in, you know, uh, on the Keith story, he's got his kid back. So I was going to say that had a happy ending. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, we had some incredible. I mean, the plasma issue, uh, uh, a company on, that was incredible when we had the that plasma. That was a great issue. interview. That wasn't was incredible. It? Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, just uh, a lot of incredible people, a lot of great guests. It's been a very exciting year. A lot of people want to be on the show. I can't wait you know, to I see what happens next on. year. Yeah, I like the, you know, considering what we had go forward, like just yeah. kind of picking this up from nothing. I can't even yeah. imagine what this is going to you know, roll into this year, considering what's happening in the yeah. legislature. And there's just so many issues surrounding this like you said it's well, just I'm, such a I'm looking issue. forward to july i hope we have some really special guests coming in july too so okay we'll folks well That's we're going to go to a break now and then we're going to do a 420 moment we want you guys to come back with us hopefully you'll be able to stay on and we'll see we'll hear you on the radio in just a minute Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required we have of doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. Well, you know what that means. You know what that means. It's a 420 moment. And today, uh, you can burn one for Bob Marley, who would have turned 70 years old on February 6th, 2015. Happy birthday, Bob. Yes. When you smoke the herb... Bob Marley. Yeah, oh, Bob. He said, when you smoke the herb, it reveals you to yourself. (laughs) For, For the best munchies and the best movies, and sometimes it's stuff that for stoners to agree on any particular subject, but one thing they will agree on is Bob Marley music. No, right? No, when they're absolutely. Smoking no, their weed. absolutely. For his devotion to weed to the soul, to the, from his soul, this rebel Bob Marley helped create and always embodied the cannabis to its perfection. Robert Nesta Marley was born on February 6, 1945, and died on May 11, 1981. He was a Jamaican reggae singer, songwriter, musician, and guitarist who achieved international fame and acclaim not only for his... Thank you so much, Lawrence. Lovely. Starting out in 1963 with the group The Wailers, he forged a distinctive songwriting and vocal style that would resonate with audiences worldwide. After The Wailers disbanded in 74, Marley pursued a solo career, which culminated in the release of his album Exodus in 1977, which established his worldwide reputation and uh, he sold over 75 million records. Holy cow. Uh, he was born on a farm. That's a lot. Yeah, he was born on his farm with his maternal grandma, uh, grandfather in Nine Mile, St. Anne's Parish, Jamaica, to Sinclair Marley and Sedalia Booker. 
Uh, let's see here. He was raised a Catholic, but was became interested in Rastafari beliefs in the 60s, um, began to, and began to grow his dreadlocks. Apparently, that Rastafari tradition of growing your, uh, against cutting your hair is based on the biblical tradition of Samson uh, and his strength coming from his long hair. In July 1977, Marley was found to have a type of malignant melanoma under his toe. Contrary to urban legend, this lesion was not caused by an injury during a soccer match that year, but instead was a symptom of an already existing cancer. Marley turned down his doctor's advice to have the toe amputated, citing religious beliefs, and instead the nail and nail bed were removed. Despite his illness, he just, uh, continued to tour, but unfortunately, while Marley was flying home from, from Germany to Jamaica, his vital functions worsened. After landing in Miami, Florida, he was taken to the hospital for immediate medical attention and died on May 11th, 1981 at the age of 36. Uh, let's see. His final wow, words... Wow, he's only 36 I, years old. Yeah, his final words were, money can't buy life. And, uh, that's about it. There, there, right there. Yeah, what's uh, really kind of cool and incredible about it was uh, we had talked a couple weeks ago about the Jamaica legislature and their government, uh, their Senate and their legislature, was going to decriminalize marijuana and actually finally legalize it and build a medical marijuana program for, the, for all of Jamaica. And uh, they sort of stalled it. And the reason they stalled it is they enacted it uh, in, in commemoration of Bob Marley's 70th birthday. I like that. So isn't That's that pretty cool? So the, now That's the nation, yeah, now it says in the news account, it says that now the nation will set up cannabis licensing authority responsible for setting up Jamaica's medical marijuana regulation system and laws and so on and so forth. And it uh, seems like everybody's behind it. And uh, what was interesting, too, is even our, our own United States government came out with a little blurb that they were against Jamaica legalizing marijuana finally. Right, oh, but for they, God's well, sake. I think they kind of gave crazy. the ceremonious nod of approval, though. They're right. like, even though we don't like officially say we want it, we respect your right to, you know, go forward with your own implementation of it or something to that effect. So, you know, it's just a lot of it's a lot of fun to me because as a young tourist, I definitely plan my vacations around where I feel like I'm not going to be arrested if I go enjoy what I want to do when I go travel. And even though I know Jamaica is known for cannabis, I realized that it was illegal there for for there for that to be kind of that weight off my shoulders is uh, is wonderful. I was definitely yeah. in, um, looking to go to Jamaica in the not too distant yeah. future. Before we uh, <laughs> salute off old Bob Barley, I just wanted to say one thing. Uh, I've been to Jamaica many times, 15 times oh, wow. in 15 years. I used to go every winter and I'd go to Bob Marley's house every year. And I'd sit on his bed, that single bed that he sings about in his songs, and I'd smoke a joint and think about old Bob Marley. Then I'd go <laughs> sit in a chapel, which is on the property that he grew up in his parents' home, his grandparents' property, and there's a chapel there, and his casket is right there in the chapel, and I sit there, and I smoke a joint and reflect on the moment. Then I go have a nice cup of tea and ride down the mountain. So that's, uh, that, sounds, tell you yeah, that sounds amazing. I, I, Bob I Marley, happy 420 yeah, celebration, you. 70th birthday. God bless you. We love you. I was watching a show on the Rastafari movement last Friday, and did you know in the Rastafari movement that uh, that one they believe in cannabis, but they're they're anti-alcohol. Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, they're a Christian yeah. sect or faith, you know. Hmm. I believe we have uh, Lee on the line, also ready to jump in with us. There you go. Hey, Lee. Oh. Hello, hello. Hey, Lee. Uh, yeah, this is Lee, and I'm I'm really just calling in because I've been a I guess a faithful listener to the show, and I. I like the show, and I hope you guys continue the good work with it, and um, I've been enjoying it. You're a fun group. Um, I like the information that you give about what's going on both locally and uh, and all over the place. Well, we so, do our uh, very best. Thank you, Lee. Thank you kindly. Happy yeah, anniversary. Sure it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's uh, listeners like that that really we really appreciate you. You know, sometimes we recognize who those people are, but the truth is uh, we have thousands of listeners. I get hundreds and hundreds of messages from people every single month. Uh, a lot of people come up to me and tell me things about the people behind the mics, about uh, commercials, about the 420 moment. And uh, I, wish, I wish we could have more callers, but sometimes we don't always have enough time to do that. So, uh, so I'm sorry we can't get you all in. But God bless you, and keep sending those uh, cards and letters and emails and tell me about the show. No doubt. Well, That's with that, great. I guess uh, we're going to jump into a couple of local stories real quick to yeah. kind of just get things sure. rolling. 
I guess a little bit of Nevada news. We'll talk a little bit about the legislature. Last week, Nevada legislature opened up. And of course, they didn't do anything with marijuana. But the first week of the legislative session was rather interesting uh, in that the there was a few deadlines. And Monday was a very important deadline that just passed because Monday is an important deadline for lawmakers as they had to make the final uh, d a bills drafts request and they submitted all these draft quests, a, a total of 960 of them. Uh, many of them were marijuana related. Mm -hmm. But uh, so the, basically individual lawmakers, committees, state agencies, and the governor can submit bills for draft requests. And every bill they, they request can make it to the committee, but uh, there's a, a number of ways you can maneuver it. A lot of uh, lobbyists and legislators know how to attach things to bills, folks. So uh, you don't always have to be discouraged when your bill doesn't get there because there's always another way to attach it. So uh, I, I trust me this, that uh, we can and our friends and our lobbyists and uh, Chick Sigerbloom, who we should salute today also, uh, and a lot of good people up there at the legislature will be lobbying for us and will be attaching everything they can to every b bill that comes through there anytime they can that helps our industry. No so, uh, so you well, keep... you, you've also got to realize that they attach bad stuff to bills too. That's true. And 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 tank it. So you need to whenever you're whenever these you know go through, then they come up for a vote. You need to really read it and make sure that they haven't attached any of these writers on them that kind of will mess with your rights. Also, mm. absolutely, absolutely. Well, I got a story here from Carson City, but the uh, Carson City Commission approves a site for medical cannabis. Two facilities in, on Deer Run Road have received the go-ahead. Medical marijuana establishments won approval Wednesday from Carson City's Planning Commission to grow cannabis or make pertinent products on industrial sites in the Deer Run Road area. The commission, voting 4-1 to one each time with Commissioner Walt Owens dissenting, gave special use permits approval to an application for a cultivation facility building at 5835 Sheep Drive and for a cultivation and medical pot production facility in a larger uh, building at 3130 North uh, Deer Run Road. Owen said his negative vote was because a facility for the handicap was near both the residences where one where near one of the locations. Uh, let's see here. The Deer Run Road facilities are a co-location proposal by Nevada Organics LLC on property owned by Dandini Wallach LLC. Nevada Organics will be seeking a dispensary license at the other end of the city on Clear Creek Road at a subsequent commission meeting. The use permits authorize the applicants to proceed unless they're in his appeal within 10 days. If there is, the issue goes to the Board of Supervisors. There were opponents. Roger Rakow, who has property in the area, opposed both the locations. He said he doesn't like the smell of marijuana and worries about break-ins, among other things. Jeff Furnham, whose business is named Nevada Organics, but spelled differently, opposed the co-location unit due, due to the name similarity. Okay, uh, Representatives of the applicants and staff said the operators are required to ventilate so smells aren't emitted and security has to be provided. The name problem was noted for the record, but did not hold sway in the commission hearing. A letter from Martin Eisenberg, an attorney and Coke trustee for trusts that own property at Mill Road, also objected to the Nevada Organics proposal. He said that the premises at 5255 Morgan Mill Road houses the Carson City District Office of the United States Bureau of Land Management. He said another federal office is nearby as well, and noting that federal marijuana remained illegal at the federal level and urged denial. So a local lawyer is attempting to persuade a local commission from not a pr or, or from de uh, denying a medical cannabis license because a federal entity is too close but yet that said federal entity sent no representatives on their own behalf to lobby against it that's very interesting yeah it is <laughs> yeah and uh we do have quite a few listeners up north up in the carson city and reno area so we hope that uh You'll stay active up there, and you'll tell more people to listen to our show. Absolutely. We appreciate your support, also. And uh, so, there's a lot of things happening. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, as far as um, a little... you know, you guys, you know, I'm staying with Dan Rush. He's the head of the UFCW <coughs> Cannabis uh, Workers Rising. Yeah, you yeah. guys want to hear a report on what's going on? Yeah, with let's that? let's hear what Dan has to say. Absolutely. All right. Well, here's Dan Rush. Yeah, absolutely. Come on in, Dan. <laughs> Hey, Jen, thank you. Uh, hey, hello, Nevada. How you doing? Good. Very well. Good to hear from you. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, Beach? Good, great. What's going on in California? So, so uh, a lot of stuff going on in California. There's uh, several different groups that are uh, mostly drafting 2016 uh, adult use tax and regulate 
uh, initiatives. Uh, there are some folks that are uh, pushing, uh, uh, moving around some legislation that will address medical in California in 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of policy activity going on here in California. No and hopefully I'm going to get to stay out of for at least next year. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what what about that uh, judge uh, judge over in the, in the Sacramento area that's uh, working on the rescheduling? What's going on with that? Do you know anything? Uh, so this new attorney general, are you talking about uh, attorney Gen- the new attorney general Lynch? Uh, no, no, but uh, we can talk about that. But I was referring to there's a uh, dis- uh, there's a district judge, I believe, in the Sacramento area. McKinney, I want to thank, I'm not, I don't have it right in front of me, that uh, she's talking, having hearings on rescheduling marijuana. Huh. But i got to tell you, I pay more more attention to the policy legislation initiative process than I do the judicial process. Okay. And uh, I've been at home at work, I mean, at, at home off work for a couple of weeks. Okay. And uh, so I can't really, you know, comment on that one right now because I, I, I'm not really familiar with with what's going on there okay well yeah but uh um, getting back to what you were saying the uh surgeon general's uh, news general. is really quite big yeah yeah um and there's some unexpected stuff and uh so uh what it all means is that we have to maintain our focus we've got to keep our eye on the prize mm-hmm. um you know, we've got to stay aligned as co- as a community Absolutely. instead of, uh, you know, breaking off into different communities and uh, and kind of focus where we want to target our, uh, you know, our best effective moves. Absolutely. And, um, it kind of seems yeah. like uh, California has a two steps forward, one step back kind of policy. Every time I look at California, like I, I was just reading in uh, online the other day about how it said that I believe Anaheim recently voted no to uh, continue to ban uh, medical cannabis dispensaries or safe access to patients. But yet Santa Ana and Costa Mesa both went ahead and they're like, yeah, you know, Santa Ana had a lottery system. They've already picked who's going to get their dispensaries. Costa Mesa's moving forward with their implementation. But yet neighboring Anaheim says no. So it's just one of these, you know, classic things. We have two communities saying yes, but yet the bigger community, which represents probably more of a combined population than those two uh, municipalities, says no, which is right neighboring. So, you know, it's uh, utterly confusing. And hopefully we can continue to push these people forward as the time goes on. You know, we just can't give up. Yeah, and 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 that's literally how it is here in California. I mean, you can have a you can have a, a county municipality that's all for it, and uh, two cities within the county that are against it, yeah. or vice versa. You know, you can have a couple of cities, and but the county doesn't like it. Well, what do you really think um, has the best chance of moving forward? You know, you you had your your claws in pretty deep there. Like, do you really think that any of these proposals have serious has a serious chance of going forward, or is it just kind of all blowing smoke? No, I, th- I think there's a good chance for things to work this year, uh, especially in California. You know, uh, our Western States Council of UFCW has been kind of uh, heading up California's legislative and initiative process uh, for the last year while I was mm-hmm. out working the rest of the country. So, um, but I do think that we can get there this year. I, I do think that legislatively we can get there with medical. Right and uh, and I think that if uh, if all the uh, different groups come together on adult use tax and regulate uh, and and focus the traditional groups and focus on one initiative mm. because no matter what we do there'll be more than one initiative right and mm. the thing oh. that people have to realize is that we're not the only community that that is going to be bringing initiatives this time around mm. really. And, uh, if, Oh yeah, uh, so there's there's a lot of stuff going on out there. Yeah, there is. Um, and it's, it's kind of why I'm you know hesitant to answer a lot of questions because uh, I just you know I I have a goal and a direction that I'd like to take unionized medical cannabis and UFCW in uh, across the country. Uh, state's council right now is working on California, but 
Um, you know, obviously, uh, whatever we do combined will have to do for the interest of UFCW members and people that have joined the union. And, uh, and that's the other message I want to get out there to folks is, you know, it's, it's time to join the union. Some of the uh, places in Nevada are beginning to open up, and we need to talk about uh, <coughs> getting those workers signed up and in the union because without that, that solid, single, unified voice, um, you know, we're, we're, not, we're going to continue to either stay where we are or we're going to start losing ground. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. You know, I, I've been kind of nervous about what these people, these dispensary owners are looking to pay their their employees. I've been worried about it for a while. When this started, everyone was so willing to say, you know, what they needed to say. Oh, you know, these are going to be great jobs we're creating and uh, we're going to pay these people great and this, that and the other. And now that it's getting to be crunch time, what I'm hearing is, oh, well, you know, we had to spend a lot of money getting our licenses and we had to spend a lot of money on the lawyers and this, that and the other. And, you know, maybe we'll pay you $10 an hour and we'll talk about raises when we can. And it's the same old thing from the same old employers and it's just going to be an, uh, just another industry of people unfortunately i fear looking to take advantage of people in every way possible and i really fear i i hope that i'm proven wrong but uh, i definitely feel like when people stand together they have more of a voice definitely and i would never stand in the way of anyone looking to uh acquire representation for themselves to make themselves a damn good living and you know benefits from themselves and their families that's what this is supposed to be all about not creating jobs but create jobs worth having and if they're not worth having then why are we doing this mm -hmm. so that's yeah. right, Perry, and I and I gotta tell you, hearing somebody like you say that is is uh, you know knowing the the foundation that you come from and 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 the fact that that your family. Well, you know, uh, opinions are opinions. You know. That's what makes this country great. You know, we all we all feel uh, differently about what's going to make a productive society, and I feel like people who are happy working instead of just working uh, are better people. Period. They're happier at home. They're happier at work, and. It's just it influences the people around them, and you know encourages those other people to go out and seek more union skills to build their uh, to build their repertoire to get you know seek higher paying jobs and things of that nature. I mean, you can be stagnant if you want, but the whole idea is to take that free training and go with it, and encourage others to take seek free training and to enlighten themselves. You know, you don't have to go to college to to make yourself a good living, and that's what this is really all about. And you know, yeah, personally, yeah, I know, and yeah. Personally, I've always found it great to be able to do something, one, you like, and two, that makes you feel good about helping others. Absolutely. I don't want to start recruiting kids into the cannabis industry only to have them hate it like any other 9-to-5 job just because they're getting taken advantage of. Right. You know, that's not what we're here for. Exactly. exactly. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, and, and we also have to remember that we're pioneering an industry, which means that we've got to create the certifications. Absolutely. The, training, yeah. the standards. You know, we had to create the semantics. Uh, we had to create the uh, the definitions, um, you know, and, and it's why you want to belong to UFCW, mm. because we are the retail and mm. agriculture and food processing and right. textiles and alternative fuels industries union. Yeah. Um, and I'll just I'll just leave it with this, because um, I, I I do want to give the phone back to Jen. Mm. I'm I'm glad that Jen and Kirk are here and. Uh, I miss Nevada. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. And um, I just want everybody to remember that uh, uh, we, wa we all worked real hard to get this industry of vulnerability up and running. And, and there are reasons why we can make it and maintain it and advance it, even being an industry of vulnerability. And that's by creating these programs, joining the union, getting together, being one voice, and uh, and moving forward together. And that's what I love so much about We Can. Yeah, I certainly and, uh, uh, certainly appreciate your comments on that. Even though you know time. I'm a Republican, I was a union president, and I, uh, a party president, and I was the president of the Minnesota Republican Labor Federation for three terms, and so I've been a Republican union activist all my life, now retired. So there's a lot of people on both sides of the aisle that are really concerned about good jobs and being good union members and stuff like that. So uh, I wish you all the very best, and I'm, f I'm for whatever you guys are doing, and I hope it provides great, great jobs for everyone. Thank you, Beach. And yes, there are good union Republicans out there, there are good union Democrats out there, and good union cannabis workers out there. And I'm going to hand you back to my 
dear union friendly friend sister uh, okay. who made it all happen for us in Nevada. And uh, thanks, guys, for having Thank me. Thank you, on. Dan. And with that, uh, we're well. going to go to our, our uh, last break of the day, and we'll be back in just a moment. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. All right, we're All back. Right. Yeah, welcome back. Welcome back. And uh, just a little bit of news out of Colorado, like a little weird story. I'm stealing, I'm hijacking one of Kurt's stories, okay? Because I used to give him all the good funny stuff and the good weird stories, <laughs> and he has just such a great voice for this. Uh, when is a 420 festival not a 420 festival? What do you think? I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah. what's the when details? Is it the festival? <laughs> well, when 420 doesn't fall on, uh, when it falls on a Monday, right, and they don't want a Monday holiday out of it, then they, then they have to have it on a different day. So Colorado's infamous 420 Marijuana Festival will not actually happen this year on the famed stoner date of April 20th this year. The Denver Post reports that because the 20th is on a Monday this year, the organizers of the festival have a permit to use the Denver Park only for Saturday and Sunday. Ah. Uh. They have to have their structure completely down by midday on Monday the 20th. Well, that's okay. They'll still be there on Monday. They just won't have a structure up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's still, that's okay yeah. because we're, 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 we're holding a 420 uh, celebration this year, and mm -hmm. it's going to be huge. And it's going to be on 420? So, it's going to be, I think so. Details to come. I'm not okay. Sure. Okay. Still, organizers expect the typical impromptu uh, revelry at 420. Mm hmm. Okay. Even though uh, recreational marijuana is now legal in Colorado, it is not legal to smoke in public. Although the authorities and the police reports, they do not expect to have any arrests this right. year. As long as no one gets shot. So there you go. <laughs> there you go, Kurt. We miss you, Kurt. You, you always have good stories. Well, I got a strange story here from the, the Ultimate Fighting Championship says that Anderson Silva has tested positive for steroids and Nick Diaz tested positive for marijuana during their last fight. Uh, Silva, the 39-year-old Brazilian, widely considered the greatest mixed martial artist of all time, tested positive for a, <laughs> a drug I can't pronounce, uh, it's metabolites, and another steroid in an out-of-competition test January 9th. Nick Diaz, his opponent, also tested positive for elevated, elevated levels of uh, marijuana metabolites as revealed Tuesday night by the Nevada Athletic Commission. It's, uh, the brief statement said it's well, disappointing. Won? Well, Silva beat him up pretty good in all five rounds, and everyone expected Silva to win, but the whole thing is that the Silva guy is such a, such a vocal anti-steroids uh, advocate. It's kind of like when Lance Armstrong got busted. It's not that he got busted, it's the fact that he spent all that time saying, oh, you know, it's just so bad, and this and that, and now he got popped doing the same thing. So uh, Diaz, you know, he could care less. He's always been a pothead. He has a medical marijuana card in California. He is sponsored. He used to get sponsored by cannabis companies when they would allow him to. 
uh, have those sponsors. He always tests dirty for his fights because he just doesn't care. You know, it's just his style. And uh, they're really, really putting the screws to him. They're like, oh, you know, we're going to find you all this money and we're going to ban you from fighting for a year and this and that. But yet, we're the real, like, that's not really the story. But the story is that the UFC light heavyweight champion, John Jones, recently tested positive for cocaine after his victory. And he was not awarded, you know, his... Uh, fight was not changed to a no contest there was no suspension no penalty whatsoever they just let it slide they're like oh you're doing coke that's cool whatever but uh if you smoke weed you know that's a big deal i remember julio caesar chavez jr got fined nine hundred thousand dollars after one of his boxing fights for smoking grass and uh but yeah john jones gets absolutely a zero dollar fine for using cocaine which i consider a much more dangerous substance uh on, and it's the fine was levied by the same uh, athletic commission, the Nevada State Athletic Commission. It's not like different people for boxing and MMA. It's the same board that governs this whole whole thing. So it just seems like either a little hypocritical, or they just really haven't written their regulations right and forgot to put cocaine in, or whatever they're doing over there. But it just seems like it's a mess. And uh, yeah, that's all. I just wanted to comment on that briefly before I moved on to my next uh, article. <laughs> That is bizarre. That is bizarre because uh, you know, even I guess they say because cocaine is a class two controlled substance and marijuana is class one that it somehow cocaine is more okay well they didn't say anything about it i don't think cocaine is addressed in the regulations at all is what i read what the article led me to believe is that they just uh, from what the article said i don't want to say forgot but maybe chose not to lop it in there with it just because for whatever reason the language just never got inserted you know how you know how legislative language goes you put one word in or one sentence and it changes everything and that's just how that particular thing rolled i don't know how many fighters use you know, coke on a regular basis. I mean, on a regular enough basis to test dirty for it right after you fight. I mean, how much are you using? It washes out in a couple of days. So, you know, what? But to be fair, he still won the fight. So, <laughs> there well, you go. The only thing I gotta say is I think maybe the Surgeon General might be on his side, because you know, in the, in that report we were talking briefly earlier with uh, with a Dan Rush, I, we mentioned the Surgeon General's report. Mm -hmm. U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murtray told the CVS Morning News just last Wednesday that he sees some promise in early studies of mer medical marijuana and indicated that he could be swayed in favor of its use for certain types of patients. Murtray mm -hmm. spent most of the interview uh, fielding questions, of course, about measles. But he, uh, the marijuana question of legalization came up calling it an interesting story that's unfolding in our country right now. Murtry described the growing discussion about the benefits and the risk of the drug and the ongoing research into the use of the medical of medical marijuana. Murtry does did Yay! Not, Yeah, he the said times are changing. Yeah, so this is the Surgeon General of the United States right now. Yeah, he didn't address the wow. use of recreational marijuana, but he spoke uh, quite a bit Baby about steps. the studies <laughs> about studies on medical marijuana and the potential for testing some ailments. Hmm. That goes well, right that's along. Great. That's good news. Well, that goes yes, right along is. with this article here about how drug czar Michael Botticelli is supporting DC's medical mar or DC's marijuana law. The United States drug czar, uh, though he is banned from supporting marijuana legalization due to federal law, says that the nation's capital should be able to implement its own laws using its own funds, even if that does indeed mean legalizing marijuana. He says, "Quote: As a resident of the district, I might not agree about legalization, but I do agree with our own ability to spend our own money the way that we want to do that." End quote. Said Botticelli acting director of the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy. During an event at the Center for Strategic and International Studies on Friday, Botticelli was speaking in response to a question from Dan Riffle, federal policies director at the Marijuana Policy Project. Botticelli, who did not endorse legalization of, med of medical or recreational marijuana at the event, added that Barack Obama also supports D.C.'s ability to govern itself. D.C. city government is mostly autonomous, but the United States Constitution gives Congress final say over the district laws, which is why this conundrum exists. Yeah. So there you and, go. And then and, and you slightly led into my little trump of that, is that President Barack Obama nearly four trillion dollar federal budget unveiled last monday includes fine print that may have major consequences for medical for marijuana legalization in washington dc obama inserted the word federal 
And so basically what happens is that the federal, because of the new budget the way it is, there's going to be no funding for marijuana uh, law enforcement. And uh, Yay! It, so, so <laughs> you know, with that one little word added to his, his budget, which, is, which also is the budget of Washington, D.C., right. they have no money, no teeth to enforce the marijuana laws, and therefore it becomes automatically effective. So uh, interesting. Gonna, so yeah, they it, can but, pass the statute, but there's no officers to enforce the law. Is that yeah. what you're saying? And, and, and <laughs> so what uh, the big the big issue comes down to is self rule. The president believes, along with many people in this country, that uh, D.C. should pretty much be able to govern itself. Okay, and generally speaking, they do. They're pretty autonomous, but. Yeah, uh, you've got a few idiots out there that are going to try to stop this. Right. And in the long run, it's not going to get stopped. You know, well, the whole country is, is obviously changing. Well, that's just one of those things. You know, that's why when I was growing up, my grandpa always wanted a He was like, oh, the president should have a line item veto. He should be able to just write that crap out. And, uh, you know, like when that representative Andy Harris went in and just decided to insert that little that little slip in, he could have very easily written that out. But once again, you know, that opens the door to a lot of other uh that's a can of worms that a lot of people don't want to uh, to open, really. So we just kind of have to work with what we're dealt, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And, and some people are dealing all kinds of things. Like there's a <laughs> report in the news, you know, like a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> you get a report about Jeb Bush smoking pot, right? Yeah, well, you know, of which course. was kind of you know okay, Him and surprising. Smoked the end but over, yeah. Now you got one out there. Ted Cruz also smoked weed in high school, but he doesn't like to talk about it. Like his potential counterpart, Jeb Bush. Uh, for 2016 GOP nomination, Texas Senator Ted Cruz has said he smoked reefer while in high school as a student. And like uh, Bush, Cruz said it was a mistake <laughs> and a lack of judgment. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, Cruz spokesman uh, responded to the Daily Mail inquiry and perhaps uh, didn't give the right answers, but he admitted it. He did smoke pot. Well, let's see what he says after the primary, <laughs> if they get past the primary, after yeah. they don't need the super, super conservatives yeah. to get them through the primary and they're looking to be more, you know, more central. But the rest of the story, yeah. as my good friend Paul Harvey would say, is America's last three presidents all admittedly smoked marijuana That's prior right. to taking office and odds and odd uh, but heavy most presidents, yes, even the smuggler Richard Nixon. Good old Richard Nixon. He smuggled in a few bags, I'm sure. Well, Richard Nixon also made Elvis a DEA agent when he was high. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. like that's, I mean, can you imagine getting that badge when you were Elvis from Nixon? Like, yeah, I can do whatever I want. Yeah, really. But anyway, uh, our uh, friend Lawrence here has indicated that yeah. we're running low on time. So we're going to get to the local announcements yeah, a few here in a second. Announcements and then, uh, Let's see, on the February 14th, this Saturday. From yep. 2 to 4 p.m. Together, 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 together We Can monthly patient and support meeting at the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf on Maryland Parkway, south of Harmon, across the street from the UNLV Student Union. And uh, please show up and you know meet some like-minded people. Uh, we also have our growing Nevada class. Beach, do you have a little more info on that for us? Uh, well, the uh, last class was pretty good. It was uh, 101, I guess. And the next one's going to be a little more advanced. Uh, but uh, we had an incredible turnout, from what I understand. And um, so just... Uh, Sign up, go online, sign up, and the music is coming in. February 21st, 2015 is our next class. That's at uh, 4 to 7 p.m. at the weekend corporate office at 1771 East Flamingo Road, Building A, Suite 210A at Las Vegas, Nevada. And the cost is $25 if you're having a little trouble and you want to get some... Uh, Drop some, get some knowledge dropped on you about growing. Also, we have our monthly potluck and fundraiser on February 22nd from 1 to 6 p.m. at our garden house at 6490 West Desert Inn. And We Can is creating our first cookbook. We're wanting to have our members share their knowledge and recipes for better health with us, so get in touch with us any way you can. But uh, besides that, you know, it's just been a wonderful year, and I'll just yep. let Beach sign us off. And uh, we'll see you on the radio. Right on. Thank you kindly for everything.